we have another type of variation that I want to share with you. And, and I, I, meant, I forgot to list it earlier, but it's called a joint variation. It's, which is very similar to combined, which is maybe one of the reasons why I forgot to uh, list it to begin with. But a joint one adds some additional uh, variables involved. One example that you might be familiar with uh, is this one. The gravitational force between two objects uh, is related to this gravitational constant, proportionality k, uh, between the two masses divided by the square of the distance. And that was a relationship that we discovered to help us figure, figure out how, how well two bodies attract each other. Well, another one also uh, we can use in, in fields of physics where a lot of these come from is our centrifugal force. Uh, for example, I take a, a Hot Wheel and tie it to a, a piece of string and I whip it around. And what's the force that's being exerted uh, on that car uh, as I create a rotation? What happens if I put a bigger car on it? Is that going to increase the force or reduce the force? And so let's look at an example just like that. Uh, I have a relationship where the, where the centrifugal force is directly proportional directly related to the radius, the length of the string, its mass, the mass of the Hot Wheel, divided by the time squared. How long does it take for one complete rotation to go around? And you can see this idea in other types of things. Uh, maybe a, a discus thrower who takes his disc and is, is uh, rotating it, revolving it around his body. And we want to figure out what might the force be at its release. Uh, and so we get a sense of what happens. So let's look at this initial model that we have, where we have uh, in test case A, we discovered that the force that's produced is 6,000 dynes. And this occurs when the mass was six grams, the time one revolution around was two seconds, and the length of that string or the length of, of that rotation was 100 centimeters. So that's our initial test case. From there, we're going to take that information, create the equation, six thousand equals k times my radius, hundred centimeters, times my mass, which was six grams, divided by times squared, and that gives us our equation. Next, we substitute the values in. Then we solve for k, 6,000 times 4 divided by 600 give us a k of 40. And again, there's no units. I haven't mentioned that before, but this proportion of constantality is unit free. So I found my uh, k. Now I'm going to backfill. I'm going to go back into the second situation and figure out, well, what happens then? What kind of force would I expect if I increase its mass three times? Uh, it takes me one more second to complete a revolution. What's my new force going to be? So let's plug this in. We have uh, our new equation is C equals 40, which is my proportion of constantality, um, times its radius, times its mass, divided by time squared. The new information is 40 times uh, radius is still the same. Um, mass is 18. I have a new mass and I have a new time. So given the second set uh, or the second set of criteria now, so 40 times 100 times 18 divided by 9 produces a force of 8,000 of 8,000 dynes. So I hope this, this, uh, these few uh, examples give you the appreciation of, of what we can find based on our emerging math skills and it also helps us to understand some of these types of concepts. We might not be able to do it every single time, but at least we're getting a sense of how things relate to each other. And that's the first step along our journey.